Excellent. Uh, today we're talking about Coin Shuffle, practical decentralized coin mixing for Bitcoin. So um, let's get started. Um, so we're looking at a 2014 paper by Ruffing, Moreno, Sanchez, and Kate. Um, everything is obviously posted on the GitHub, uh, but here is the, uh, the paper itself. Um, last week, just a reminder, we talked about Snicker coin join, and the summary was that we can have a non-interactive coin join between two participants if the proposer, if one of the two participants assumes likely UTXOs, tweaks a revealed public key with a Diffie-Hellman shared secret, and then uh, takes this partially signed Bitcoin transaction and broadcasts it to a public forum where the other participant may sign it when uh, they see it. So essentially we talked about uh, non-interactive coin joints. So far we've talked about Knapsack, CoinJoin, Snicker, uh, today's Coin Shuffle, and then uh, next week's will be decided at the end of this uh, call. Uh, you can find out everything on our uh, Wasabi Research Club GitHub. Okay, so we're going to reintroduce uh, last week's topic, which is the problem with current coin joints. So um, the problem that we talked about last week, we're going to talk about this week as well, is that they require coordination. Um, uh, so last week it was more about interactivity. This week it's about coordination. Um, so coordination is, a, you know, is potentially a problem uh, because of things like privacy or the fact that the coordinator becomes a central point of failure. Um, so the question today is going to be, can we create coin joins without coordination? Um, just like last time, we talked about what it would take to, uh, to create a coin join. And really, it comes down to knowing the inputs, the outputs, and the signatures. Now, uh, if we think deeply about this, it's not just about knowing inputs, outputs, and signatures. You know, inputs and outputs, um, uh, change outputs, aren't necessarily anonymous. Um, so participants can, can declare their inputs and declare their change outputs. But we also have to find out all of the participants' um, mixed outputs, so their anonymous outputs. And we need to find this out without having them reveal the, the link between their outputs and um, uh, um, and the fact that they belong in the coin join. Um, so if we look at how Wasabi does this with a coordinator, well, Wasabi uses what's called um, secure multi-party computation, or essentially just Schnorr signatures, uh, uh, sh uh, um, sh uh, Schnorrian blind s signing of outputs in order to um, allow for outputs to be anonymously submitted. So uh, users, for example, will register their inputs and they'll have a blinded output signed by the server, at which point later they will submit the unblinded output to the coordinator and the coordinator doesn't know who is the person that uh, submitted the, uh, the output, only that that person is valid um, because the coordinator uh, did a blind signing of, of the output. Okay, um, so coin shuffle in summary is just Wasabi without the coordinator. Um, so uh, using descent protocol for communicating anonymous outputs by participants, and we'll look at that uh, briefly and then a little bit, uh, there are no questions so far, right? Or, or comments? No. Okay, so coin shuffle. So um, we can imagine six participants uh, in particular, we want to imagine an ordered set of six participants. So we'll, we'll have that the left, the red uh, individual is the uh, is the first, and the last participant is the purple. And there's all the participants in between. Um, and so, just it's for, for the purpose of, of uh, illustration, it's easier if they're colorful. Um, and so, essentially, what we want to do is that these participants they want to submit their inputs, they want to submit their change outputs, but they also want to submit a blinded output, an output that no one, that is completely anonymous to the rest of the participants. Um, and they want to do this without a coordinator that is essentially controlling uh, how this, this, this goes. So essentially what you have here is what the, what the uh, coin join will look like at the end, is it should look like a bunch of inputs from all six participants, some change outputs and some outputs that are of equal size that uh, we don't know who they belong to. So we have six ordered participants. And we have an anonymous coin join output. So it's trivial to get the change outputs done and the um, inputs done because those can be linked together. 
and participants don't have to hide the fact that they are the ones submitting that information. Now we're going to see how a participant, in this case, is going to uh, anonymously submit uh, a uh, an anonymous output. So in this case, what we have is we have the the first participant is the red participant. So if you look at this uh, colorful little blob, uh, in the very middle is the red address. Okay, that's like the unencrypted red address is right in the center there. And then what the red participant is going to do is that person is going to encrypt that red address against purple's public key and take that encrypted data and uh, encrypt it against blue's public key and so forth. And then that data is encrypted against green's public key and so forth. And so what you have, and this is familiar to some of you, it's like an onion, right? So it's, it's a layered encryption. So it's encrypted against purple, blue, green, yellow, orange. So uh, then red will take this blob and pass it to the next person in line, which in this case is orange, right? Now, orange will decrypt one layer because orange, it holds the orange public key. So orange can decrypt the layer uh, from red's uh, address and simultaneously add uh, orange's uh, address, also encrypted in the same onion scheme, uh, being encrypted first against the pur purple key, then the blue, then the green, and then, and then lastly, the yellow. And now that orange has two uh, blobs to, to pass on to the next individual, orange is going to shuffle them. So, you know, just like this. And again, yellow now is going to submit uh, his own address, uh, unwrap uh, the, the two uh, layers of yellow on the orange and the, and the red, uh, and then again encrypt uh, everything so that it, it's, it's layered against the next three participants and shuffle and send over to the next let layer. Um, and so... You know, uh, things repeat over and over again. And finally, what happens is that Purple, who's the last individual, has all of the addresses and can um, and can uh, uh, decrypt all of them, but has no idea who they belong to. Um, so from the perspective of Purple, only Purple uh, address is known to, be, to belong to it. Every other address uh, belongs to uh, someone else, and it's not clear who. Um, so from Orange's perspective, you know, only the orange address is known. The other five addresses are completely um, uh, a mystery. And from yellow, it's the same idea. And, and from red. Um, and that pretty can, much can, is... Can you, can, can you just go back? Because I think it's incorrect. Y yes, go back like two more or something. Yes, so, so you see uh, right now, yellow only has three outputs three three onion encrypted stuff but actually um it's everyone broadcast <coughs> so oh okay okay sorry um go ahead i i i know it's incorrect but i can't explain it i yeah i i will okay. come back to it yeah, so uh, it, it definitely can be incorrect. Uh, I, I don't claim that I'm 100%. Um, but I, I think the idea overall, or the, 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 the aim, is oh, so okay, that all okay. participants in an, in an ordered fashion can uh, submit their addresses and not have the address linked to them. And it's done exactly in this, sort of, in this sort of way. Uh, I, I got yes. Uh, yes. I think... I think what Aviv is, is telling us is correct because that's the same that I understood when I read the, the paper. Everyone, I mean, you you de decrypt the the previous participants with your private key because the the message was encrypted with your public key because previously there is an announcement uh, phase where all the participants share their public keys so in this order you create these onion um, layers right and is that how how aviv is, is telling us now I, I think it's correct okay so yeah so I, let I, me I, explain what is incorrect about this is that as you said first the announcement announcing the public key so 
everyone here, Aviv, Igor, Lucas, Max, oh, I don't know if you want pseudonym or your real name, <laughs> sorry, uh, Rafael and me. Uh, so everyone announces our, his own public key and everyone has to think of a message or, or an output, right, a Bitcoin address. And we have to encrypt that Bitcoin address everyone has to encrypt it in a specific order so first to aviv then to igor then to lucas and so on and then we broadcast all the encrypted messages so that's how you can shuffle them that's what is shuffled um well mm, no <laughs> uh because no uh, I, what I understood is what Aviv is, is, is saying, that it is an, an, an order, it is in order, yes, and the, the message is, is passing one by one, and everybody decrypts the, 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 the coins with their, uh, with their public keys, shuffles the, 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 the encrypted addresses, yes, and pass that to the next one. So in the end, the the, the latest one, the, the latest participant, or the one in the in the final step, can finally decrypt all the the addresses, except of course the one that belong to to him. Okay, so I, I think that's correct and there might be only a misunderstanding. Aviv, can you go back to, to red? My question is, at this point... Okay, go, 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 go to the next one. At this point, orange only has two or has all the encrypted messages. Only two. No, yes. That's, no, that's what's incorrect. Orange has all the encrypted messages. Everyone encrypt their message in a specific order and broadcasts all the messages. Red starts decrypting the layer, the, the, the upper layer of the messages and shuffles it. Then orange starts decrypting his layer and shuffles so all the messages right everyone has all the messages all the encrypted messages that's the point I, it, it actually seems like what adam is saying makes a lot of sense uh so there's no reason why everyone couldn't submit all of their addresses like the way red did it so that uh mm -hmm. And that's how you can put it into a peer-to-peer -peer network where everyone broadcasts every message. It's it's not really passing a lot. Maybe maybe it can be, but it's not really passing around the messages from peer to peer, but broadcasts all the messages for everyone all the time. I, I did think that it was sequential in that red had to communicate to orange and orange had to communicate to yellow and yellow had to communicate to green and that it wasn't like i mean i, I guess you could do it publicly because you can keep announcing everything and only the 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 right person can decrypt that layer but um but i i, I, did, I did think that it was sequential i mean just think about it what if red because in, in this case, red doesn't shuffle anything. Uh, then he ca red cannot make sure that the things are shuffled correctly, right? Orange can only partially make sure that a two thing is shuffled. Now, I, I actually wrote code for it, so I, I'm pretty sure what I'm saying. Well, anyway, yeah, can, can, okay. we, can we agree in this or, or, or someone would like to have objection? I'm, I'm very happy to concede this because I think that the, the, the point is the same, that the goal is the same, is that these peers want to essentially mix these outputs and not have connection between who submitted what. 
right? Mm. Oh, all right. Let's let's move on then. Okay. So, um, right. So here wait, is wait, I, the. Actually, could you please one more time kind of summarize kind of because that was the final. Yeah, I mean, uh, so the summary is is here as well, but um, the, the 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 summary is uh, of what happened is that uh, six participants got together and are essentially submitting their anonymous addresses outputs in such a way where when Purple finally opens all six addresses, Purple can't link those addresses to any of the past participants, and it's done with like onion layered encryption uh, and shuffling. So uh, those outputs are shuffled across participants. Um, Adam cl uh, uh, says that um, all six addresses are shuffled in with every single uh, step. And that could very well be the case. Um, but at the end, uh, you have six addresses that are uh, unlinked. Okay. Okay. Thanks. So, um, so, so here is the uh, w uh, in the paper. It's explained. Um, so you can see in the top right, Alice has this layered encryption, uh, and she passes off to Bob, who decrypts. Who passes it off to Charlie, decrypts, um, and uh, and you can see this sort of mix mix network. Um, yeah, and on the bottom left, you have a coin join that's been signed. On the bottom right, you have a coin join that's not been signed because someone tampered with the addresses and added an invalid address um, to the coin join. Um, so I... the big thing to talk about with coin oh, Sorry, Aviv. Can, can I show you okay. my code that uh, maybe you understand it better based on that? Sure. I am sharing my screen, right? Okay. Uh, do, do you see it? Yeah. Uh, okay, then uh, then it's a problem because it's not in the video, just like last time I had to cut it out. Any, uh, anyway, very quickly, uh, then uh, we have Ollie's Bob and Satoshi, and everyone broadcasts their public keys. I run this and it's going to be th this this comes out so everyone broadcasts their public key and then these onions these are the the encrypted messages encrypted for everyone and then everyone starts to decrypt their messages one by one everyone starts to decrypt all the messages or all, all the lay layers and and at the end we get a we get get a script like uh, like a bitcoin bitcoin scripts right that's that's the bitcoin address it just script up key and not bitcoin address so anyway uh, if if you see that it, yeah it, it works okay i i don't want to ruin the video with this so so go ahead. Obviously. Okay. Uh, well, we'll pr pretty much uh, at the end here. Um, the big concern, right, when you consider uh, getting rid of a central coordinator and instead having peers uh, um, doing this process themselves is is the time it will take and the computation it will take from the peers. So. Um, in the coin shuffle paper, they took uh, participants and set them up on a local network and then on uh, a global network um, uh, with, with a certain amount of um, uh, latency uh, from um, one side of the network to the other side of the network. And uh, here you can see the time it takes. So if you look at the local network where there's almost no latency, um, it looks like an, a linear increase in the time it takes with 50 participants, you have 30 seconds, 40 seconds of time it takes for um, 
essentially the participants to do the entire uh, dance from start to finish. And then with the global network, you can see that the time it takes is, is much, much more because um, every single individual needs to hear the latest state and then decrypt that situation and then pass it on to the next individual who will who needs to then uh, so it, it is sequential whether uh, uh, individuals are talking directly to each other or in public broadcasting to everyone it's still the case that uh, that these onions have to be decrypted in a sequential way so the more participants you have the more time it takes um, and on the right there is the average processing time uh, per node um, yeah. Um, so, uh, yeah. And we also have Descent, which is what this is based on. They also did a, a similar um, um, test of the shuffle time um, for, uh, you know, 44 nodes with varying size. Um, here, it's one megabyte of data, um, of encrypted data that's being shuffled over 44 nodes. You can see it takes several minutes. Um, so 15 minutes by 44 nodes. Um, and over here, it was three minutes by, um, by 40 or 50 participants. Um, so yeah, in summary, uh, rather than have a secure multi-party computation with a coordinator, CoinShuffle aims to solve the problem of constructing a coin join with just participants themselves. Using this, the descent messaging protocol, CoinShuffle participants shuffle their anonymous outputs until all outputs are made available to all participants without a link any participant to an output and the biggest drawback is the time cost as the number of participants grows um, and then the advantage is that there's no coordinator uh, to uh, to attack do a denial of service um, that's pretty much what I think needs to be said about this so yeah we'll leave it at that thank you Aviv let's continue with questions and discussions and then ideas and at the later on uh, topic for next week so yeah who, who has questions I have a comment well first of all I I think uh, I, I don't know what your implementation is based on probably is in a new version that we are not that we don't know, uh, but I again I understood the same that Aviv uh, explained us, and in fact there is a very simplified version or very simplified explanation in Git talk, uh, in Bitcoin talk about it by by team, one of the of the creator of this scheme, and I I I understand the same, <laughs> uh, whatever I read it. But anyway, that's one point. The other okay, point can I have just one is question? that if Alice, if uh, Red doesn't have all the onions, then who's gonna Red decrypt the, his onions for, for other people? No, um, Alice, in this case, the Red doesn't decrypt, he only encrypts the the output right encrypts the output with all the public keys of the other participants in order so the next one in this case the orange the orange one decrypts with his public key it removes one layer yes and just uh, encrypts everything again with the, um, uh, in the and the, the, the latest layer is the the, the 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 yellow one, right? So yellow, the crypt, remove that um, layer, mix those co those addresses, and encrypt again with yes, yeah, is what Aviv is, is is doing. So in the end, all the all the uh, addresses has only one layer of encryption that is the one belonging to the to the to that guy the what color is that purple i think okay so purple decrypts all the addresses yes except the one that belong to to him and perform just 
the latest um, shuffle and broadcast that list of outputs to everyone. So after that is the phase of the, the, the next uh, step is creating the, the, the transaction. So nobody knows what output belong to, to the rest of I see. Uh, okay. Uh, maybe then I, 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 I don't know it. I didn't understand it properly then. Uh huh. Uh, because what? of course both, both, both schemes work. I mean, I know that my scheme is working. I and now that you explain what you're doing is it seems to me that's working too. So yeah, and that that results in less encryption and decryption. So I well less network messages. Maybe it's faster. So yeah, I, okay. Uh, yeah, I, I think. Yeah, yeah you're right. Yeah, all right. Uh, I, I have an uh, an idea here for this scheme, because you know, if in the first uh, phase, I mean, in the in the announcement phase, uh, participants could announce their public keys and also how much money they want to participate with. Right? For example, Alice can say, uh, this is my public key and I want to participate with uh, one Bitcoin. Uh, Bob, this is my public key and I want to participate with 0.83 they, Bitcoins. They have to, uh, they have to announce sorry? their inputs with their public key. Yes. Yes, but uh, my, my idea is changing the protocol just a bit, right? Because if everybody knows the public keys and the, and the um, amounts, that other participants uh, want to participate with, then what participants can do is creating the outputs, yes, not only the addresses, but also the amount of that addresses using the snapsacks, right? Because remember, that was one of the ideas that w the, the, the latest uh, proposal that was never published by I don't remember the name of the guy that was with us in the knapsack um, uh, episode. <laughs> let's say yeah. he said there is a new version that I never published. That is, the participants only know, only need to know the amounts of the other participants, so they can split their outputs in such a way, <laughs> yes, uh, that they can create a knapsack transaction. Right? Um, so, in that way, we could uh, um, encrypt more than one address, but also the amount. So, uh, you don't need to shuffle, right? Because the idea of, oh, oh well, yes, you need to shuffle, sorry. You can shuffle, but in the end, what the purple guy will receive is a lot of output transactions Yes, with the not only the script but also the, the, the amount and that will be a knapsack transaction. So it's it, it could be used for uh, an equal outputs to using what we learned in the first episode. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. That's a, I, I think that's a very important idea. That's a good job Lucas, seriously. Thank you. So, anyone have questions, or should I go with mine? Okay, I, I'll give you. I, I will just say I, one I comment. A, one, one general question. Okay. Okay, go ahead, Aviv. No, no, you, you ask your question first. Oh, okay, it was it was a general question about um, a denial of service, or rather, civil attacks. I mean, we can use a central coordinator right, to uh, to ban UTXOs, uh, but uh, and and we have a fee to have economic uh, disincentives to civil attacks. But there are no coordinator in Coinbase, so how can we defend against civil attacks? 
So that's a really great question. Uh, it's addressed in the paper and in the protocol itself. Uh, so the, the, the phases, you know, there's the first phase is the announcement phase, then there's the shuffling phase. Uh, what happens uh, later is that if um, after the shuffling phase, if you get to uh, an undesired outcome, namely uh, the addresses in the, that, are, that are appearing are not belonging to all the participants, you know, someone added two addresses or someone didn't shuffle correctly, there is a way to go through the blame phase where uh, essentially all the participants reenact what they did and you can tell if someone uh, did something bad. So you can do blame, but that also is takes time and uh, it's arguable that it would be, it's, it's, it's easier to attack this sort of system than a Wasabi coordinator. Can, can I rephrase your answer? It was correct. I, I just want maybe sure, sure. easier to, to say this way that if someone misbehaves, that obviously everyone detects it because the final coin join doesn't happen. So everyone just exposes all the actions that they take with the, without their without accept their outputs, accept their Bitcoin addresses. So, and the protocol can run, but because if, if you give out all the actions that you take during the run of the protocol to everyone that, hey, here is my, my private key, for example, I signed my messages with this, uh, then you can tell exactly who misbehaved and you can rule him out and you can run the protocol with the remaining honest participants. This, this is something that was... I have, I have a comment because that, that's right. In fact, there is some uh, advanced techniques in the, in, in, the, in the other paper. I think it is the coin shuffle plus plus that I'm not familiar with yet. But uh, listen, civil attacks are hard to prevent in in conjoins, right? It's it, it, it's really hard, right? Um, now, because in this case, for example, uh, if you are one guy that participated with multiple uh, identities, let's say, yes, imagine I am red and you are uh, orange, yellow, uh, <laughs> light blue, and blah, blah, blah. So there is nothing I can do. Uh, yes, but but uh, uh, Daniel of service attacks can be. I mean, I think it's na a naive alternative, but it works <laughs> pretty well. That is okay. Someone didn't sign the transaction, right? It is easy to see to know that. So you can just ban that coin <laughs> as we do <laughs> and try again. Sooner or later, that guy will run out of money, and probably it's not the best, <laughs> right? That but doesn't work, Lucas. Why? Why? Uh, l let's think about what if purple uh, just switches one of the addresses of the outputs. Yeah, because Lucas, my Max, we cannot hear anything. Sorry. Yes, I mean, uh, I, I agree for the reason that Eros said Rick the Cadena but I specifically said Alice Ma Ma Max, sorry, we cannot hear you. She has pocket. It actually bought Charlie. Very bad. Sorry. I just uh, look at the looting of the That's it. Uh, Max, do you have some software or feature that mutes you when you are not? speaking or something like that because I see that you are muting and I'm muting and in high frequency. <laughs> anyway, Lucas, can, can you reply to my question? Uh, sorry, I, I I didn't I didn't hear your 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 question. Can you repeat, please? What if 
purple the last one changes the address changes let's say red's address to his own address then it's going to be red who doesn't sign so you cannot really ban red right so the way it would but, work no wait wait but the i can see i can see the transaction right the, the, the final conjoint transaction the final conjoint transaction has in this case one two three four five six there are six participants let's say there are six inputs to just to simplify and there is one missing uh, signature so someone didn't uh, sign right so in that in that case we can ban that coin uh, so you can participate again but not with the same coin Lucas, the, uh, so this this is exactly uh, uh, what you. So in, in this protocol, unfortunately, you can't apply the same banning heuristics as with Wasabi. So with Wasabi, you can ban the coin that did not sign. In this protocol, if 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 uh, if someone if you end up with an unsigned coin join, there are two uh, reasons: either someone is not signing on purpose. Or, in which case, you can ban the the, per, the coin that did not sign. Or someone did the protocol wrong, right? In the case Adam gave, uh, Purple uh, is the last person with all of the addresses. And Purple, um, you know, dumps Red's address and adds two of Purple's addresses to, to, the, uh, to the mixed outputs. So how do you know oh, that that happened? Sorry. Yes, 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 sorry. Yes, I understand now. Sorry. So, what, what, <laughs> so what you have to do in that case, it's actually quite unfortunate, is that every person has to reveal to the entire group uh, what information they received and what they encrypted and, de and, and what they decrypted. And, and by doing this, the guilty party will be revealed. But the annoying part is that uh, this also takes several minutes of, of everyone sort of presenting what they have. And then you have to recursively go through and see which person, you know, uh, tampered with the, the, uh, the information. And if, and if you can waste three minutes of time, then, you know, arguably it's, uh, yeah. It's privy to DOS attack. Yes, it's it's clear now. Yes, sorry, it was a silly question. But anyway, remember what uh, Adam uh, uh, Gibson um, tell us, right? The, 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 the denial of service attacks is because someone wants to prevent this from happening. And it's, there is not an incentive because you cannot steal money. So if there is a Daniel of service attack is, um, I mean, there are no incentives at, at the beginning, at least for this kind of um, attacks. So, uh, 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 a naive implementation can work at the beginning, at least. I mean, an implementation that doesn't implement any Daniel of service attacks prevention mechanism. So it, it, the, the point is, is that with this protocol, you do have a blame phase and you can point out the guilty party. It's just it takes additional time. So all, all I'm going to say is, uh, is, is that looking at the trade-offs of this protocol, um, as soon as we start talking about large number of participants, more than 50, we're going to have pretty severe problems with, with latency. And I think there's a, an issue where the longer it takes for a round to happen, the more likely someone is to lose connection or, 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 or be a part of the problem. So I think it's just not practical to do coin joins this way. One more thing that's interesting in this is that uh, here, the DOS protection, so here the coin join happens between the honest participants in wasabi we always forget the state we we take down the the, anon the required anonymity set but anyone can register to that not only those who are who were already registered in the previous failing round right this I, I, i'm not 
sure which uh, direction is the good, but this might be something that we can consider later on. Uh, any thoughts on this? Can you say that again? I, I, I don't think oh, I sorry. understood. Sorry, yeah, I was not clear enough. So here, if a round fails, then the next round is going to happen between the participants without the malicious party. In Wasabi, if a round fails, then the next round, the anonymity set, required anonymity set will be lowered, but it, Wasabi doesn't make sure that those people who were in the failing previous round, the honest people from the failing previous round will mix. Do you understand the difference? It's a subtle nuanced one, but it's, it's somewhat important. I want to say yes, but I, I honestly don't, don't think I understood. Mm, okay, so there is a round Wasabi coin join, Wasabi or coin shuffle doesn't matter, the round fails. What happens in coin shuffle? The same participants, the same pa participants will coin join. It, it is coin shuffle. In Wasabi, it's not the same participants. Wasabi just lowers the required number with the number of malicious participants, but still in, in that round, anyone can register. Okay, so two things about that then. Uh, so the firstly, coin shuffle, if a coin shuffle round fails, it goes through the blame phase, it, it points out someone to blame, and then it does a coin join, another coin shuffle without that Participant. That's that's what I I understood. Yes, exactly. And in terms of in terms of wasabi, I thought wasabi was you know if if a coin join fails, it's because someone didn't sign, and that that one coin that is didn't sign is banned, for example, and all the coins try again minus that one coin. So I guess I'm confused on both issues. You are right, except the end that not all the coins who already registered it, it's not those who are redoing the exact same r failing round without the malicious person but it's 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 a completely new round anyone can come the malicious person is bound but any new coin can come in in coin shuffle new coin cannot come in in okay okay so that that i that i understand uh and i didn't know that was the case and uh i i it's a bit yeah it's a, it's a very small detail but yeah i guess it's important all right next question what is secure multi-party computation <laughs> Is that for me? Because I can just read a Wikipedia definition. No, it's a question for the author. <laughs> but, uh, <yeah>. <laughs> <laughs> Next time, <laughs> when coins of a plus plus will be. Okay, so one more thing that uh, since we are com since we are comparing it to Wasabi, uh, there is there is a comment from or, or, or actually it's not even a comment anyway I, i'm just going to read it I, i'm not sure if it's from the paper or, or it's a comment from bitcoin talks so maxwell sketches a modification to the coin join protocol using blind signatures to avoid the problem of a centralized mix learning the relation between input and output addresses this this is this is the Xiaomi and coin join just saying and, and yes it's in the paper now i know this protocol employs the anonymous communication network tor as a blinding as a building block to provide unlinkability 
In contrast, coin shuffle provides full resistance against traffic correlation attacks by using a decentralized high latency mix network run only by the participants. So that's that's an important point here too, right? That uh, Wasabi relies on new Tor identities. Coin shuffle does not. It, it, it's doing a mix. You could even fucking mix without Tor just on the clear net, right? It would still work. That seems pretty well, important, important and I definitely point. missed it. But but actually, I, I mean, I was giggling when I when I read the paper and the shout out to zero link. Uh, but then the, the the question that I have is, I mean, we could also do zero link not on Tor but on a mixed net. Would that work too? I mean, all the coin. Bear in mind that keep in mind that all the coin shuffle implementations are actually using a server, and you know in theory you can use just a bulletin board server where participants are are posting their messages but they are actually using for coordination and dos protection and things like that i think so so yes uh, you can say that cash shuffle is 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 wasabi without tor and uh you know what I mean. So, so yes, uh, definitely. But, but then you will call it coin shuffle because coin shuffle is using a mix net. That's the thing about it. Well, I guess the important thing to note is that coin shuffle doesn't make any claims about how we structure coin joints. Rather, just how we communicate, right? So. Oh, okay, sorry. A anyway, uh, I understand what you say. I, it, so we, this, we, we kind of spoke about this already, but... Uh, maybe a, a bit further um, uh, to, this, uh, to discuss how we can combine Knapsack with this. Uh, so I'm not sure I understood the conversation we had earlier. Um, so would it be that we first do a communication round uh, with, uh, with Coin Shuffle, and then we get this coin join transaction and then we apply knapsack to this coin join transaction um or or how exactly uh, would, would that work well knapsack uh, works by splitting the outputs uh, in, uh, depending on the amounts of the other participants Right. So if you know how much the other participants are participating with, you can split your output in such a way that after the process, I mean, you, can, you do exactly the same that Aviv uh, explained us, but in the end, the, the, the purple guy will um, decrypt all the outputs, right? And those outputs, yes, uh, when you analyze those outputs, there will be more than one trivial mapping to the inputs, right? So it is basically a knapsack transaction. Is it clear? Wouldn't that lead to like spam in the chain? too many UTXOs or would there be like uh, some kind of minimal amount minimum amount of uh, for one UTXO that's the trade-off with the knapsack is that uh, yeah it uh, the, the the better the knapsack the more UTXOs you need Okay, going back to the to the to the comment to the what Adam says, yeah, I mean it is possible to to use the same technology that in 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 DC networks. I mean using XOR, using the XOR of, of XORing all the the messages with all the public keys of all the participants, and in that case, we could remove Tor. The only problem is that we still will be able to see 
the IP addresses. Uh, something that with Tor we cannot do. I mean, it, it is possible to use that technology to 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 in, in, so the, the server will not be able to know uh, who message belong to whom, right? But the IP address is still there. Oh, that's that's a very good point because in Wasabi, the server doesn't know that if someone registers to the coin join, did he used this he used Wasabi before or not? The server doesn't know because it's on a new Tor stream. But you with Coin Shuffle, if you don't use Tor, then you have you can tell that. Uh, that which participants participant which person participated in which coin joins so now you can correlate so so you you actually have to use store for coin shuffle to yes that's my point yes okay i only have one uh, discussion thing or, or rather an interesting thing that uh, regarding coin shuffle is that I don't know if you guys knew it but uh, on Bitcoin talk the very first page of conversation was about uh, a replay attack and then team Ruffing noted that the thing about encryption schemes is that all, all secure uh, encryption scheme always uses randomness for encryption to make sure that encrypting the same message, message twice does not yield the same ciphertext. The added randomness is built in the encryption algorithm itself. One does not have to add randomness manually to a message before giving it to the algorithm. Try it, take an encryption tool and try to encrypt the same message twice <laughs> so anyway it's it's uh, just good to know i yeah so do you guys have any uh, presentations questions discussions ideas or should i move on to something more interesting I have no uh, ideas or questions, just something that we could have in mind that could improve our uh, conjunct transaction is uh, researching if is there any way to identify the offender in order to remove it and and create a new conjoint without that attacker. That could be great. It, uh, I think it's not possible, <laughs> but it could be good to, if I don't know, if we can say, okay, someone didn't sign, uh, provide proof that <laughs> of something. I don't know, just to avoid creating a new round again. So uh, that would be really good. I think it's possible. I, I think it 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 can be. It can be done and not even hard, but uh, I'm not sure it makes sense because then what's the attack? The attack is that the Sibyl comes, the malicious, malicious Sibyl comes and tries to, I don't know, maybe, uh, then, I don't know, it's a, it's an interesting question to explore, definitely. All right, so, before, yes. Before we would get into the next topic, I want to talk about something, is that what direction should this research club take? Now, um, I want to talk about just uh, an idea of how should we, how should, how can we make 
what's the most what's the best thing to to research in bitcoin privacy and i have a small roadmap ish thing and we could adjust the researches to to that later on right now we will of course as we discussed we will go through the coin shuffle line but uh, after that so uh, i uh, please opinionate it it's uh, it's something that's that i've been thinking about for a year now and it's getting more and more solid based on the, the opinions but i would like to hear hear yours too and 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 adjust it so th this this is the roadmap to bitcoin privacy okay very first thing to do is to figure out the most block space efficient way of mixing coins second thing to do is to figure out how to send money in a mix instead of se sending to yourself mixing to yourself the third thing to do is after these things are figured out, we have to figure out how to do it trustlessly. Fourth thing to do is figure out how to do it in a decentralized way, which I am not interested in, but uh, for completeness, completeness uh, th this is something that uh, people might be interested in. And the fifth thing to do is figure out how to integrate other infrastructures into this this new mixing technology that's just been researched what what are these these infrastructures those are relevant light clients how to do it with a light client how to do it on mobile how to do it with hardware wallets and how how to and are there any ways to I integrate it to the lightning network somehow uh, and rolling to the lightning network or something like this so figure out the most block space efficient way of mixing figure out how to send in a mix how to send in a mix instead of mixing to self figure out how to do it trustlessly this 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 three step is is what the wasabi research club sh should be about the integrations and and later things are are i don't know it's 10 year down the line or 20. <laughs> so do, do you guys agree that this is uh this is a logical sequence of of research that we could take uh, later on when we learn more things I, I definitely uh, agree. I, I would. Uh, I, it might be a good idea to start to talking about what uh, the how we would measure efficiency in a coin join, you know, against the block space that it's consuming. Um, I've been thinking a lot. I, I don't know if we have time right now to talk about like the perfect. This would, be that my, Bitcoin this would be my next next topic to be honest that uh, I, I have sub steps for the very first step so so, so I, I don't know yes should I say the sub steps or, or do you want to to say what you you are saying right now yeah I mean I, I, I guess I'll just say what I've been thinking about because uh, you know we're all thinking about privacy right now um, when I when, when I think about the the perfect privacy on Bitcoin, given what Bitcoin allows, barring layer two solutions. Um, to me, that perfect solution is essentially, you know, every block contains one transaction and all inputs and outputs from all transactions are collapsed into a single transaction. And then there is some optimization happening where people are breaking down their inputs and they have common outputs of, of similar size. And then there's knapsacking and all sorts of fancy stuff. But the idea is that the asymptote of privacy, the best place privacy can go, uh, this is an intuition, I could be completely wrong about this, is, is, just, is just every single block is, is, uh, is just these massive transactions that that's that's where i think things would be going um and so that kind of points to what adam was saying about how to figure out how to send in a coin join as well because that means that if you can receive and send and mix all in one coin join then all transactions could be coin joints in the future 
I, I think it's a so, so yeah we will probably never get there or not probably we definitely never get there but uh, it's it's a good good idea to take uh, imagine what could be the perfect uh, the best that that's possible and start to work backwards from there <laughs> yeah that's a uh, good so in any way uh, for these three steps uh, don't really see yet what's the, the do you guys see the logic between this these three t steps that uh, most efficient way of mixing send in a mix and then do it trustlessly does it does it make sense i i really would like some feedback yeah yes i think that's a nice idea and this you know especially though also um you know as you mentioned later with with other technologies like for example lightning network i think an important aspect here is uh, to integrate um getting into second layers and out of in a private way so doing you know coin joints into a lightning channel factory for example uh, or doing hyperloops, um, you know, atomic swaps out of the Lightning Network in a coin join. Um, but this somewhat goes together with uh, sending and receiving within a coin join, uh, though not just into a single public key, but more advanced uh, second layer uh, you know, script. So the reason is why the Lightning Network uh, integration is at the very, very end, because everything depends on the coin join scheme. So first you, you really have to figure out how to do one chain transactions and then you can move on to Lightning Network. Anyway, the very first step is figure out the most block space efficient way of mixing coins. And this is my thinking. There are two steps here. First, we have to figure out how to score mixes. And second, since finding the maximum score based on the set of inputs is computationally infatiable, an algorithm must be found that performs, performs the best in multiple simulations. Okay, uh, sorry, uh, you asked for feedback. <laughs> uh, I not totally agree, because I know that your goal has been your goal for for probably years, right? But, uh, I mean, finding the most space-efficient way to make this, to build these conjoint transactions. But I, I will say that our goal should be the most private way to create the conjoint transactions. I mean, probably it is more expensive. Well, yes. But uh, I think the 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 first filter or the first goal should be to maximize the privacy uh, even when probably is not the most space efficient solution <laughs> Look, just that that. Th that is that is obvious what provides the most privacy if you if you you know the common greatest divisor you have a set of inputs yes you get the common greatest divisor of them and every output gets that right or let's say one satoshi but rather the common greatest divisor so that that provides the best privacy but this is an optimization problem the best privacy while not wasting that much block space so you know yes uh, that, that's clear it's that exactly the same that i thought when you say it is obvious yes it's, it is obvious but i mean uh, we have to have um like a minimum uh, requirement right we cannot um worse <laughs> the worsening the, uh, the the privacy level that we have now um it's, uh, it's not suggested. Uh, 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 yeah, sorry, sorry. The, the problem uh, in, in, it, it is not easy to know what our users want, 
right? What the, do you know? They they sometimes want to be able to make more money and faster. Sometimes they want to 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 be able to participate with less money, uh, or uh, <laughs> it's not easy. Yes. So um, probably it could be more efficient, space efficient, to mix uh, higher coins, <laughs> right? For example. Uh, for example, instead of now we are using 0 0.1, 0 0.2, 0 0.4, of course it would be more uh, private to say all to split all in 0 0.1 coins, right? But uh, I don't know if the solution is in the in the if trying to to achieve a more space efficient solution, if that will not require to mix um, bigger coins, I mean, to, to have bigger outputs. What we I think is... Same piece here, uh, I, could I be, understand what you're saying. Okay, but we don't know what the... Okay. I, I, just, I just have a roadmap okay. to how to get there. It's... Uh, my idea is that we take the existing data, the existing Wasabi data of what happened with Wasabi, uh, what amounts people are coming in a mix or just existing blockchain data. The point is that you build a software that makes this simulation. And when I say the first step is how to score mixes, what I actually mean is to figure out how to score a chain of mix. Step one, figure out how to score one mix. And step two, figure out how to score a chain of mix based on real world, world data simulation. So right now we are just scoring. We are not really mixing. We, 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 we put some naive mixing algorithm and we try to figure out, we see a transaction chain of a mixed transaction chain and we try to figure out how the hell should we score that mix. And then we say, okay, let's use Knapsack for that. And we run Knapsack for the exact same data that we run our previous naive mix. And then we compare our scores that, hey, did Knapsack score better or the previous naive mix score better. Does that make sense for you? Yes, it makes sense. Uh, it is a it is back testing basically with different uh, algorithm. The, the only the only thing that we have to have in mind probably is that given we mix zero point one at a time, yes, basically, yes. Um, people with uh, a lot of money, I don't know, probably one thousand bitcoins uh, is not currently mixing with with wasabi probably yes because it will take if they want to make it right it will take a lot so uh, probably what we see in our conjoint transactions that information is already um constrained by our outputs right uh, so uh, uh, that that that's uh, that just was a comment. Yes, that. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. That's uh, that's something we have to figure out implementation time. That uh, should we take the Wasabi real world data or should we look at instead the Wasabi mix data? Instead, should we look at the input amounts on the blockchain just randomly? Exactly. Yeah. Theater? So yeah, that, that's a methodology issue and that's something to figure out and now going back to the wasabi research club um, because this is the first step that we should think about how to how to arrange the inputs and the outputs and we went down the path of coin shuffle i think we can use it for our advantage because the thing is, even after we figure out how to arrange the inputs and the outputs, 
we have to figure out how to do it in a trustless way and it's like hot <laughs> it's like what a, <laughs> it's a really hard problem but that's when the coin shuffle line of research comes in and at the end of that line of research there is cash fusion which is probably solving this problem and which is something that I wouldn't take as it is but I would really love to know the the techniques that they are using so we can go through the coin shuffle line of research which is with this coin shuffle now next time as Lucas suggested we do something about the mix networks and Tim Ruffing, the author of Coin Shuffle, suggested to look into the Dining Cryptographers Networks. It's a paper. And then, of course, Coin Shuffle Plus Plus, and then Cash Fusion. And after we, we look into Cash Fusion, which our hope is that it either solves our problem or provides or armors of us with the necessary tools to to tackle later the trustlessness problem then we can move on to coin join analysis and after the coin shuffle things we can move on to coin join uh, coin join analysis stuff like coin join sudoku boltzmann maybe knapsack code or or whatever so so we drop the coordination issue we we get into the 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 subset sum issue what we started with knapsack that's that's my idea so and 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 at that point we we could actually start to research uh, how to arrange the amounts how to score the mixes right that's the first one so this is my long term idea <laughs> I have a, an intuition about scoring mixes that it will be quite hard to do this. And, you know, I, I know that we can apply some basic heuristics, you know, for example, take the volume and multiply by the number of participants or this or that. But um, it's it's just not trivial thinking about how to score uh, a mix, in, in, especially because if we decide, you know, some function accurately, uh, consumes a transaction and then gives a good score, uh, whatever function we decide will shape the direction of the mixing in the future. So I think that this will be quite a tough thing to not just present a function to score a mix, but also to justify why this function is the best approximation. I I think NAPSAC is a perf the NAPSAC paper is a perfect basis for that because what they did there is they counted uh, the likelihood between inputs and outputs to belong together but they also counted the likelihood between inputs and inputs and outputs and outputs and if you add up those numbers somehow uh, just weigh it with uh, block space used and you apply the whole concept to a mix of trans to to a chain of mixed transactions if instead of just a single mix then that might work i don't know i i i think that could work like that is it is it uh, is it feasible to calculate uh, the um, the the subset sum uh, of a, of like a large coin join, like efficiently? No. Can we do that? Not at all. It's a uh, five inputs, five outputs that could be done. Six, I don't think so. Okay, so uh, we, so we have constraints here. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> So the coin shuffle line at the end with cash fusion is this is this good for the next three weeks? So next dining cryptographer networks, then coin shuffle plus plus, then cash fusion. 
and then we can move on to to the first step i agree yes i think that's good but maybe in this slide how about increasing the frequency uh, because i have more capacity to maybe do i don't know two calls a week for example I <laughs> because i'm actually very i oppose <laughs> <laughs> yes, <laughs> it, it, it takes time to read the papers and think about it. Uh, it's not so easy. 